Hi, and welcome to All Punk With Toys. My name is Lawrence, and today we're gonna to take a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Dread Knock Torch. That's right, I just got this in. These are available at BBTS. Uh, so if you are interested, you wanna get them now, BBTS is where you can get them. If not, down below, I will drop links to where you can get them on Amazon Entertainment Earth and I believe Hella Dope Toy. So anyway. Let's take a look at this. This is the first new box that I've actually got to feel and actually see in person. And it's definitely smaller. I wish there was a little bit more to it. Now I'm gonna open it up so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, it's not as bad in person. I will say this, it actually feels pretty solid unlike the other boxes that sometimes seem flimsy. And you'll know what I mean when you, when you feel it. But again, that doesn't really matter to me. So anyway. Here he is, Cobra Dreadnought Torch. I really wish they would have just went Dreadnoughts, taken the Cobra symbol off and put the Dreadnought. They already started to do it, but probably saved a penny or two on the figure. So you can see, uh, for the most part, everything that he comes with. I know there have been some confusion with some of the other drops that they've shown off where things kind of get hidden behind here, but you go online and you can see what everything is. All right, and there you have a wonderful artwork of torch which i think looks pretty good there you have the uh their file card the qr code to hell takes you absolutely nowhere and then on the back you can see a couple things that he's got in here and then you see a bike in the back and him using his effects so we are going to take a look at this we're going to compare him to my original o-ring torch um, and see how well they compare if they if they if they did it right, I guess you could say. Um, we always see design cues that they took from it. So anyway, let's get into this because no one wants to look at this for this long. So anyway, before we do, please take a second, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I drop a GHO video. And there's a good chance that I have another dreadnought sitting in this room that I will be reviewing. Probably went right after this one, to be 100% honest. Let's go. All right, so now we have Torch out of his plastic prison. And let's take a look at everything that he comes with. And first off, we'll take a look at his two pistols. So we have seen these pistols in the past. Hold on one second. I got this little thing hanging off here that I'm going to be bumping into. Okay, so there's his pistol. I believe we've seen this pistol in the past. Um, it is a pain to get out of the... Plastic. The plastic is just a pain to get some of these figures out. That is one thing that I absolutely hate, but it keeps everything in place. So uh, you can look at the nice design on it. Got a port for blast effects. Um, and you can see the nice design that they put up there. This one is the exact same. He's going to have uh, two holsters for this. They come off pretty straight. Again, not really a huge issue when it comes to uh, pistols. They tend to go back into place the way they're supposed to. All right, so here's the blowtorch that I know so many people are wondering about. And let's take a look. He has this skull on the front where it has flames coming out the eyes. Got some spikes on the head. Mouth is wrapped around it. Now, I don't care. I know people didn't like that. You could probably pop this off maybe. It looks like it might be a secondary piece. But again, like this is fun. This is what you're looking for. It doesn't look exactly like the original and I'm fine with that. Uh, but you got the bar over here that I'm gonna assume is going to spit the, um, the gasoline onto it or whatever it uses. Get your trigger. Now it is all gray, but with this, it really breaks it up obviously. Then we'll take a look at his backpack, all black. It says Knox on it, Knox rule. Now again, this is spelled wrong. And I know Lenny gave some excuse on the reason why, and I hate to say this, and this is coming from someone who, thank God for spell check on the iPhone. Um, <laughs> there are too many spelling mistakes on the classified stuff that I can just, I can't just talk, take. I can't chalk it up to a, hey, we did it on the purpose because they're not smart enough to know how to how to spell. <laughs> There's too much stuff. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. 
There you have your canisters. Here's where the hose is going to plug into. Uh, the yellow really does a nice job and obviously putting something on it uh, where you have a nice skull. So it kind of really goes with his flame skull here. Here we have the, uh, the hose. Now we've seen this with Dr. Mindbender and the Televiper. Not the tele, yeah, the Televiper uh, and the uh, Techno Viper. So there you go with that. And we will compare it. Don't worry, guys. So now let's look at the flame effects. And this is really exciting because you can see I added a non dreadnought up here, and there's a reason why I feel like he should have been there. So here you kind of have a little flame here. Uh, if it's just kind of he's getting ready to torch something. Here is the mid the, the middle blast, which looks really good. And let me tell you, this thing is actually pretty stiff. All right, so I don't think we're gonna have to worry about it uh, just collapsing. It feels more like if you messed around with the Valiver stuff, what they're using, uh, but it doesn't have any rigid, sharp edges. And then we have the long one. And again, it is not super flexible, which is good. Um, oops. Which is good, and as you can see, here you go. And of course, I brought the bat up because we're going to see if it works on them because I have a feeling with some of these new bats, we might be getting some of those. Now let's get into the figure before we load him up. And I know we've been waiting for this. We've been waiting because this, this completes the original Dreadnoughts. And I know we're getting more. I really wish Monkey Wrench was already announced. I know we're getting him. So I'm not going to complain. So quickly, we'll take a look at this face sculpt and... I know people are going to be upset they got the glasses do not come off and I'm perfectly fine with that because Ripper I'm not actually going to question his actually stand pretty good and look good buzzer and eh, not so much all right so here we go we got his little chain or his uh, necklace it actually moves around you got the nice glasses you got the headband hair looks nice on him beard looks good Obviously, we don't have to worry about any issues with the uh, um, with the eyes, no pupils. He's got the choker chain on him. The vest uh, moves around pretty nicely. It seems fairly pliable. I really wish they'd go with something like what Jada Toys is using because it's so much more pliable and tends to work better. You got four zippers, and then you got the chain running around. And then you got all the studs on the back. He's got a chain, uh, a chain belt with a little skull there. Yes, you guys are looking at Torch's crotch. He's got the flame tattoos along with chains wrapped around. So clearly there is a chain theme going on here. You give him th two holsters here for the for his sidearms, which is good considering um, poor Buzzer is kind of left out with just a chainsaw and one pistol. Now there was some complaint that they were using, I believe these are Mindbender's boots, but when we look at the other one, the classic you'll see, well, it does make sense. And they're just black all the way down. There's no, uh, no paint on the buckles or anything. So it even has some flames on his back ass pockets. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the articulation and see how it moves. So he does move back and forth. Head can move up there and down. It is on a joint, so he can move back and forth. He has an ab crunch, which is only going to move so much when this is in the way. But it's pliable enough that you can move it down. It can move back. T-pose, no problem. Bicep swivel. Double pinless joints. You got your wrists, and he is a righty. Same here. He's got a spikes around his arm, which are not molded on there, but seem to be really tight, which is good because I hate when this stuff kind of moves down, but it will, it can prevent getting uh, a better bicep at times. Eh, his biceps are pretty big, so I guess it doesn't really matter 
And let's see. Yep, his wrists actually move up and down rather than side to side. All right, he does turn side to side. God, that's a perfect Jean-Claude Van Damme. Drop down hips. If you are wondering about the drop down hips, people have wondered about those in the past. They do help, they do help get them on in vehicles, sit, sitting poses. And now that we're getting so many vehicles, it really is a good idea. I don't know why I sound like a robot there, but I did. <laughs> there you have your double pinless knees. Now, it is in the 80s here, or high 70s in Michigan. It was sitting on a truck. Didn't have to heat anything up. The figure feels pretty solid. I don't feel any, like, soft. It doesn't feel soft like some of the figures in the past uh, year and a half. A lot of the uh, Tiger Four. So, there you go. That is how he looks. That is everything that he has. So before we arm him up, let's take a look at him compared to the original torch. And the first thing we'll take a look at is the backpack. So on the backpack here, we have two of the same size canisters. They're almost the same size. I guess this one is a little bit bigger than you have that one. And here you have a handle kind of on the top so he can carry it around. He only has just the one. So they didn't remake the exact same one. And I got to say, it seems like for the Dreadnoughts, they have really changed a lot of things. So it does give them that option, that chance, that if they do retro cards, they can really redo the weapons and give them classic weapons. And I know so many people will want. And you can tell that the blowtorch is, or flamethrower, whatever you want to call it, is nothing alike. All right. So, quickly, we will take a look at him and compare him to him because I know you guys absolutely like this. So, they did change the color of the, uh, the glasses. I actually like this purple uh, a little more. He seems to have the exact same hairdo, the same facial hair, I guess you could say, and same hairdo, along with the red bandana. And you never really realize how... How much it actually is hidden. Now this is my original one. But I don't believe there's any paint that's worn on it. He does not have the, uh, the tie in the back. So he has modernized that. <laughs> Alright. He has the choker chain. He has the skull necklace. Now quickly. He has the chains. Going around. Which they put in here. But thank God they gave him some tampo. Some paint on it. And it looks like he has a zipper right there and right there. So he look, he does have zippers down here for pockets, but they just added some up here. And then he has the three little pieces that cross. And I love the fact this little bit of paint app adds so much to a figure. It makes them look so much better. All right. Then you look at his belt. And they gave him a skull here, which you didn't have here, but you can tell it's also a chain belt. Uh, they left off the pockets, which, again, I'm perfectly fine with. And on the back here, they gave him little flames on his pockets, which, okay, works for me. Holster on this side, but they did remove, uh, they, they did take away the knife, which, hey, you know what? Guns are better than knives in a gunfight. All right, then you get to the boots. Now, they changed the color of the boots, but Tony Figs, Tony's Figs, sorry, Tony's Figs. There you go, Tony. Look at it. They are thigh-high boots. Yes, they gave him the extended piece, which I always loved on the original figures when they had that little uh, knee guard there, their knee pad. But I like the change of the boots. It actually works better than the gray. And as we showed on the back here, you can still see the chains went around, but there were no studs on the original. They gave them studs on this. So. All right. So let's mount him up. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> All right. So. For the flamethrower, I'm assuming... 
after holding it like so. And they seem to use, oh, maybe not. Thought they used the, uh, the, the twins' hands there for a second. Take our pistols. They slide in there perfect. You don't have to worry about them falling out or anything. And it's going to be kind of hard. You're going to have to really work on getting a nice straight pose here along with holding this. I guess it's not that bad. And then we'll just start with the... If we can get him to stand... We'll start with this one. Again, this is the long one, and it's going to plug directly into there. And first thing I notice is it's kind of heavy, so you can see he's kind of leaning forward. Again, I don't use stands. I don't use sticky tack. I don't like using that with my figures, but there you go. You can see how it actually sets. No problem. If anything, this is going to sag more than this actually does. So I'll pop this off, take a look at the small one here. Now every time you move this, this hand does. So I'm going to tell you, pose it in this hand first and then make it work for this hand. Now this peg does seem a little bit longer, but that hose, every time you move it, does move that backpack around. You see it with the Televiper, I mean, see the Techno Viper, the Televiper, I guess. This guy is, he's gonna be, he's not gonna be super easy to just get in a flamethrower pose, but luckily there's other things that you can do. Get this out of the way. All right. Then obviously here we have the small one. All right. So. There is your torch, but let's quickly, we'll take a look at this. And I'm going to tell you right now, these things are way too big. So that is a huge misstep. Now, I think they did this because they needed it to be a little bit thicker. Um, they need to be a little bit thicker so it doesn't sag. But I got something right here that I think, I wonder. One second, guys. Here's the His Tank Cannon. And there is your port size, I believe, for this. So there's your port size for your, for your His Cannon. Now we need some nice blast effects for that. Um, so this is for that one. I don't believe it's for, I don't think it's for the, major, the big one. Sorry about this, guys. So I actually, it's the same port size for the large cannon too. You guys can't see I'm off. God, I can't move it because I have it staged to take a picture. <laughs> oh, you know what? I can just move it. How about that? The things you don't think about when you're trying to do this. So you can see this is the port size that you're trying to get, right? For your, uh, for your his tank and probably for many, many other vehicles that are gonna come, so. All right. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work for the bats, so my thinking that this thing was gonna come for the bats, uh, well, that is thrown out of the window. Not gonna get that, but hey, here you are. All the dreadnoughts so far, they are dreadnoughts, not dreadnoughts. So just remember that when you're discussing the dreadnoughts, because even if you spell it wrong, He's still going to pronounce it the same way. Okay, so my first thought of this torch is I think it's really, really good. Uh, it feels good. I love the fire effects. I do wish they would work with the bat, but unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. Uh, they probably had to make those uh, pegs just a little bit thicker. But all in all, looking at this figure, he comes off really nice, really smooth, good weapons. A good adaptation to the O-ring, and I know I've talked about it. I don't need the exact remake, and while we're getting the um, the other figures, the retro-carded figures, so we'll probably get them again and maybe with more classic weapons. But all in all, uh, if this is what we're going to get from Classified, it is going to be a long-lived line. 
and I think people are going to be extremely happy for many, many years to come. But hey, you know what? Go out, check out the links below, get them. All right, so there you go. That is your first look at G.I. Joe Classified Dreadnought Torch. I'm not going to say Cobra Torch. They're not Cobra. You don't see the Cobra logo on them. They have the Dreadnoughts. Anyway, I think this is really good. The packaging isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but the old style looked better. This box is like twice as thick, so I guess you're not really... I mean, you're using so much... There's so much plastic, or so much, not plastic, so much cardboard. Again, they have tree farms. I kill copiers. I'm sorry. I kill trees because I fix copy machines, and I rode a skateboard for 30 plus years. I killed a lot of trees in my time. Anyway, <laughs> here you go. I think this is awesome. Uh, looking at it, this figure, just right off the bat, God, it may be the best Dreadnought so far. And let's be honest. Torch and Buzzer and Zartan were all really, really good. But it's a quick look at them. Here you go. Go to go check. Go, go. I can't talk. Go check out BBTS. They do have it right now. How long they're going to have them until they get another shipment? Nobody knows. It's anybody's guess. But right now, I got them in hand. Here you go. Um, all right. I'm going to get out of here before I do. You know, you know the deal. We got the social medias. Punk with Toys on Instagram. You have a Punks with Toys on Facebook group page. Because once you join, you're a punk with toys. Last but not least, I'm going to leave you here. Please take a second. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I drop a G.I. Joe video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you to another link of one of the other Dreadnoughts. And right down here is going to be the classified playlist of everything that I've done. Take care now.